Michelle is a musician with albums released as Everyone Except Me and artist behind the post-apocalyptic webcomic Stray Cats. She's kind, a bit shy, and furiously creative. Henrik is a filmmaker with over two dozen films and TV shows as producer, director, and occasionally host. He also released a couple of music albums. He's bombastic, larger than life, and tenacious almost to a fault. Together, they've been best friends for a decade. This show is awkward. So, Michelle. Yes. I had a very eventful week. Really? Yeah. I was the guest on a documentary. I was uh, interviewed, I guess, is what you call it. I guessed. Everybody's a guest on a documentary. It's not like there's a documentary well, yeah. regular. <laughs> but equally as important and satisfying, I just sold something on eBay right before we started recording. Really? I sold my old iPad that I forgot I hadn't already sold. Oh. <laughs> I found it on top of the dog's cage the other day, and I was like, shit, this is still, I still have this? I should put this on eBay. <laughs> It's like an old, it's an iPad 2, Air 2, mm -hmm. 64 gig. So I was like, oh, I can get at least a hundred bucks for that. Even with like, it has like a little dent on a corner, but not, no damage to the screen. I mean, I like checked it really thoroughly. Mm -hmm. So I put it on eBay and I love, here's why I love selling things on eBay. I run a regular store, right? Where I sell movies and books and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And Every time you sell something, you got to put it in a package. You got to make it nice. You got to put like the, the inserts in. You got to do all the stuff and then you mail it out. Mm -hmm. When you sell on eBay, it's just like, all right, I'm going to wrap this in some garbage. I'm going to put this in a box that has like an old address on it and just scratch it out with a knife. I'm going to spit on it and tape it up, <laughs> send it off. And then you get, you get a five-star rating for doing that. Because mm -hmm. they're like, it came quickly. It was covered in saliva, but it was fast. Um <laughs> So that's why I love selling on eBay because, like, I, I'm wrapping this thing up with like old Amazon packaging and stuff, and I'm like, mm -hmm. ah, this won't look unprofessional because I'm just some schmo. Mm -hmm. I yeah. also was kind of a jerk to the person who was buying this because I Amazon or not Amazon eBay, they kind of screwed me over a little bit. Oh. I entered the info about my iPad, and then it was like, we recommend you start your bidding at ninety dollars, and I was like, well, that seems a little low. For a 64 gig iPad of any age, and it's a yeah. cellular one, which adds a little bit. And then when I made the listing, it, it kind of automatically made most of the listing. It listed it as like 16 gig, 32 gig, 64 gig. And I was like, this isn't a multiple item thing. It's a 64 <laughs> gigabyte. I thought yeah, when I put in the model yeah. number, it wouldn't do that. Yeah. So nobody really found it for a while. Well, then I get, I, I said it as a, it started bidding at $90 or best offer. Mm -hmm. And some person sent me a best offer of $80. And I was like, come on, you're sending an or best offer lower than the starting bid. Ah, so I responded with a counter offer of $100. <laughs> And and eBay was like, you should, uh, you know, counter lower to keep them interacting. I'm like, no, I want them to go away. Yeah. So I sent them a hundred dollar counter offer and they countered that with 90. So I just, I just rejected it. I didn't even counter anymore. I was like rejected. Then they write me and they're like, is there any damage to the iPad? And I'm like, just the dent in the corner, which is photographed on the mm -hmm. listing. And then they're like, does it come with a box and a charger? And I said, it comes with a off brand charger and no box. Cause mm -hmm. I actually bought this on eBay myself. So <laughs> it had no box when I bought it. Um, but I, I said that and then they said, uh, okay. And then they sent me an offer for a hundred dollars. <laughs> and then I was like 115. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> And they, and they countered 110. So I got 10 more dollars by them dilly dallying. Cause that's what happens when you try to, when you try to out shist Mr. Enrique Kautu, that's what happens to you, pal. Wow. That's impressive. 10 extra dollars. All mine. That's 10 McDoubles in 2016. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, I win. Um, yeah. But no, I was... Uh, <laughs> so I, uh, I'm i packaging that up. I'm going to take it to the post office when we're done here. But because uh, I do want this... I think it was a lady. Uh, I do want this lady to be thrilled that she's going to get it really, really fast. Mm -hmm. So because yeah. that really makes all the difference. If you just put it in the mail right away, people really appreciate it. Yeah. 
Uh, but no, so I was in a documentary. Uh, <laughs> it was called. It's called uh, Mom and Pop, the Mom and Pop Video Store Revolution. I apologize if I'm messing up. I mean, the main title is Mom and Pop, and it's about what are called lovingly mom and pop video stores. You know, the video stores mm-hmm. that were not blockbuster and were not Hollywood video, were not movie gallery. They were, you know, owned by individuals. And there's an interesting history with that because, for instance, uh, in the Dayton area, we had a ton of tanning salons that rented tapes. Interesting. I'm guessing you didn't have that. Um, if we did, I wouldn't have known because I... You never um, rented movies? In from a tanning salon? Or, uh, okay, so what, but you never, but you rented movies, yes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you just went straight to Blockbuster? Like no, the, we, like had a, we had a mom citizens? and pop. Oh, yeah. No. What was it called? Yeah, what was it called? It's called Easy Video. Oh, that's a, yeah. that's a great name, too. That's such a solid mom and pop type title. Yeah. And it was very beloved. Like everybody liked it. So yeah. good. That's a, well, you know, New Jersey had a great deal of cool video stores. Uh, well, as you know, because you were from there. Um, New Jersey is one of the most is the most densely populated state in America. So you, that causes lots of interesting things to happen because you know mm-hmm. if you start a good business, there are enough customers <laughs> like yeah. in Jersey. Because when I first moved to Jersey in 2006, my uh, little the little town I, I lived in. Uh, well, actually, I lived in Bloomingdale first, and then I moved to Butler. But they're mm-hmm. right next to they're literally next to each other. So, um, but when I lived in Bloomingdale. There was a mom and pop video store still functioning in the shopping plaza next to the pizza place I would go to called wow. Video Vals. Hmm. And I got to know Val. He was just a middle-aged guy who liked movies. And I would tell Val, like, oh, you should get this or whatever. And he'd be like, huh. And every now and then I'd come back in and he'd get the thing I suggested. Cool. Yeah, it was a cool experience. And that's, I mean, late in the era for mom and pop video stores. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but one thing I wanted to point out was, uh, how offensively rich your family was that you never got videos from the library. No, no. Go on, defend yourself. Uh, Honestly, the library, when I was growing up was like little and tiny in a house somewhere. It was, it was one of those. Yeah. Okay. They did expand the library later on. So now it's like a normal size library. So wait, where you? Where did you grow up exactly? In in Plainsboro. Okay, that's where I New thought Jersey. you grew up. They didn't have a public library, like a big fat public library. No, they had a little one. It, like, like so when weird. Plainsboro was was younger than it is now, <laughs> it was like it was like a big field. Um, like there was oh, nothing there. Plains. Like there was Burrow. a post office in the field, and then there was like a shopping. There was like one strip mall. I like to imagine that the that the post office was in a field, no roads going up to it either, just in the middle. Yeah, just of the dirt. field. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess that makes sense. Plains Borough. Hmm. Yeah. But you were right next to Princeton. So what? <laughs> You think I'm hanging out? You think we're so rich we're going to Princeton all the time? We're going to their public library? Like, that's not how that works. We didn't, I didn't have a card for Princeton public library. Because <laughs> where I was, I mean, you were when you were poor enough, that's you had to go to the, the public library, which mm-hmm. we had like a, a somewhat sizable public library. And they had VHS tapes to rent, but they were always kind of oddball movies you know you'd have like re- it was it was like you never had anything in between you either had like extremely mainstream stuff or mm-hmm. just what the hell is this why is this at the library uh that's where i first saw the wizard of speed and time was at my library that's pretty cool we used to i used to check that out so much that i remember one time my mom made me because it was I, I was late to return it my mom made me call the library and see if they would just let me re-rent it you know without having to come in mm-hmm because I liked it so much, I was just going to watch it some more. That's nice. <laughs> they did let me, by the way. So, uh, and to this day, I, I get, I, I, I don't go to the library to get movies, but I have a lot of friends who do. Yeah. I mean, I, and I do want to sit, I, like, we did get a bigger library, and we did go to the library and get books from oh, the library. books, yeah, yeah. I just, we just didn't get movies, I don't think, from the library. Because you were too busy being cultured. You were like, oh, <laughs> we read books. We don't rent movies from our new library. Yeah. Friggin' people. In your- no, yeah. <laughs> no, no. Uh, uh, it's just interesting that you didn't rent movies from the library is all. 
I mean, we didn't forever. Eventually, inevitably, we were able to afford to rent movies at like West Coast Video, um, Diamond Video. Those were the two kind of places around us. Hmm. Uh, I mean, aside from Blockbuster and, and stuff like that. But but when I was younger, the West Coast Video was literally across the street from our apartment complex. Oh. So, yeah. I mean, was there a Blockbuster? Yes. But it was not as convenient as literally walking across four very dangerous lanes of traffic to go there, which I yeah. did. And it made my mother very angry. <laughs> um. Oh, that's like my favorite. You know, the first time I risked my my stupid life for movies of many was crossing those four lanes of traffic to get to the West Coast video where my mother had taken me in once and told the lady there he can rent whatever. So the lady would just let me rent whatever because my mom came in with me once and said that. Or wow. at least a woman I had paid to say they were my mom, you know, depending. On yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm like, I'm like seven or eight. I'm like really young. Uh but that was those were some fun memories. Uh, the place, the whole place smelled like mildew. Also, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm. <laughs> but no, so it was really cool being in that documentary. Uh, Bobby, uh, I, I always I think I think I'm saying his, his name right. Kniep, Kniep. Uh, I've only ever read it. I've never you know heard him say his last name. Uh, but Bobby is a really cool dude. We got to know each other via social media. He bought a couple of my movies. Uh, became a fan, I guess. And uh, it was really cool to be just kind of a featured guest in a in a nice documentary, you know, because he had seen the last blockbuster, which is now on Netflix. And I highly recommend you watch it. I think you would get a real kick out of it. But he saw that and he was like, man, I want to see one about mom and pops. Mm-hmm. So and then uh, and I, I won't take up much more time talking about this. But then as we're talking Bobby mentions that they had, cause Bobby's good at finding stories. He's good at like going places and finding like local things. So they cool. went, he'd asked me, is there anywhere I should go before I come to your house? And I said, Oh yeah, you should go to game swap. The, the game store, a uh, movie store in Kettering, Ohio mm-hmm. you should go there. So he goes there and I guess he tells them he's making a documentary at mom and pops. And one of the people there is like, Oh man, you need to find out about this guy. He had a video store. It's a crazy story. And, uh, Bobby was like, huh? So he tells me a few of the details. Mm hmm. And I have heard the story vaguely, but I don't know anything really about it. So I pick up the phone and I call my buddy Matt, who actually manages GameSwap, but he wasn't there that day. Mm -hmm. Uh, I called my buddy Matt and I was like, Matt, uh, what are you doing right now? And he was like, not much. And I was like, do you know anything about this? And he was like, I used to go to that video store all the time. So I got Matt to come over and they mic'd him up and had him tell that story. Cool. About this place. You're going to love this. About this place called K&L Video in Kettering, Ohio, where the guy who ran it was this really sweet older dude like in his 40s and he used to watch after all the kids like he'd give them uh discount rentals for good grades and huh. matt, matt even talked about one time he got suspended from school and the guy like took him to side and like sat him down and said dude you got to get your stuff together you don't want to be one of those people hanging in the bad crowd you don't want to be getting in trouble all the time especially not once you're an adult you don't want to be like that mm-hmm. so that place became very special to matt and a lot of his friends in kettering and it was very special until that guy had to turn himself into the police when he was on America's Most Wanted. Oh, well, he, that's why he knows that yeah. you shouldn't do bad yeah. things. Yeah, that's so. That's the thing, though. Is after that happened, Matt was like, "Oh man, it makes perfect." Like now, thinking about what he's saying, he would always say, "Like, don't get in with the wrong crowd. Don't go do this stuff." Mm-hmm. So it turns out that in Oklahoma in the eighties, he was involved in a breaking and entering thing, but they thought that no one was home. Mm -hmm. Someone turned out to be home. They ended Mm -hmm. up getting killed and then he was serving time. I don't know how much, but he met this woman while he was in prison that they would write letters to each other and she ended up breaking him out of prison. Wow. (laughs) And then they ran all the way to Dayton, Ohio, bought a video store and just started living. It's so weird. And he was fine until he was on America's Most Wanted. And then, yeah, and then and somebody. So he immediately turned himself in. He was like, there's no way that somebody's not going to call in. So I'm just going to turn myself in. So, uh, and, Matt, and Matt even mentioned that he wrote him a letter in prison. He wrote him back and said, like, he was happy to hear that he was, you know, happy and healthy and being creative. And, you know, yeah. But what a freaking story. Yeah. And anyway, then he was, a, that's why I was like, he told me the details. I needed to save the America's most wanted reveal for, you know, the right yeah. moment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, so anyway, but yeah, so that was really cool. And I loved that I was able to, uh, bring my buddy Matt in and give them a little flavor of, uh, you know, cause that's the thing about the mom and pops. They are the epitome of local. Mm-hmm. So here's a local legendary story. I mean, like, holy crap story. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. I also got my buddy Jeff to be on in the documentary. He was a video broker based out of Dayton, Ohio and video brokers. He was a video broker from 1990 to 1995. What they used to do is when blockbuster and Hollywood video and movie gallery and all the bigger chains would buy a bunch of movies after about 60 days, the new releases weren't new anymore and they would either Mm -hmm. get rid of them or they would call down how many copies they had. Sure. So back then the movies cost anywhere from 60 to a hundred dollars a tape. So what the, what the video brokers would do is they would call up Blockbuster or whatever and be like, we want to buy those tapes from you. And they'd buy them for 20 bucks a tape to, you know, just to get rid of them. They'd, they'd sell them to them for 20 bucks a tape. Then they would call up all the smaller chains and mom and pop stores and sell them to them for 35 bucks a tape, make a little bit of profit. And mm-hmm. the mom and pop store saved a bunch of money, but they just didn't have the newer titles until, you know, 60 days or, or so after the new release. Right. So yeah. he would broker t- tapes all day long to all these places. Cool. Um, and he was telling you, you tell me stories about it. He was telling me that like, he loved that job because you just showed up at 10 o'clock and left at five. Cause you literally couldn't talk to the video store owners before 10 o'clock. Cause they weren't even in the store. Mm-hmm. And at five o'clock, all the customers come. So you can't get them on the phone anyway. I mean, they're going to get yeah. off the phone and be like, I got to rent videos. Yeah. So he was like, yeah, you just saunter in at 10, you work till five, then you go home and, and all you do all day is talk about movies. And, and he said that one of my favorite things was, uh, he said that like, they'd be like, I haven't heard of that movie. What's the cover look like? Mm-hmm. And he'd be like, uh, it's got a woman in black underwear with a gun. They'd be like, yeah, we'll take three of those. And he'd be like, all right. <laughs> So I hope I'm describing that right. Jeff occasionally listens to the show, but uh, no, so it was a really cool experience and I was glad to get some very talented, insightful friends involved as well. Yeah. As my very talented and insightful self, of course, of course. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So when you were, when you were a kid rent and you rented tapes, do you ever rent any for yourself or was it always a family affair? It was always a family thing. Yeah. I'm you. Yeah, I I know, but I'm what, I'm not what? bad. I know, bad. I know, I know. So you guys always did like big family movie nights. Yeah, I mean more or less. Oh, yeah, that's so was, cute and wholesome. Yeah, I mean we didn't like call it family movie night. We were just like, oh, you it was just like watch Friday or yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. No, I get so. that. See, when I was when I was really young, absolutely. I mean, it was just mostly with just my mom and I, but mm-hmm. but we would totally have movie nights. But because I was so extremely interested in movies it was always like the movie mom wanted to watch with me and then the sure. movie that i had picked yeah and usually mom would go to bed and i would watch this whatever stupid crap i wanted to watch <laughs> so no that's cute though um because then when i got older when i was in my teens you know, my mom was still a pretty young lady and and she wasn't tied down so friday nights were mom's night so i mom would get me a couple of tapes and a pizza Mm -hmm. And she'd go out and have a good time, come home around 11 or 12 or whatever. And I would, I was a very responsible young kid, you know, I, I, so it was not a big deal. Mm -hmm. I was used to it. So, uh, and I, but I have a lot of really fond memories of like, of like getting the pizza and watching like beyond belief factor fiction until nine o'clock and then watching my rented tape and then like watching uh, cartoon network at 11 o'clock to catch space ghost and then Mm -hmm. watching my other tape until I fell asleep. Like I have all kinds of fun memories of that stuff. Yeah, It was cool. Good. So that's the thing I was talking with my buddy Dave afterward about it. You know, that's the thing about nostalgia. We believe and you know, there's a part of us that believes that if the video store was back, it, it, those feelings would be back mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. they're partially right and partially wrong. Um, yeah. I mean, in one way, sure. Like I used to rent movies at my family video uh, with an old girlfriend just for the experience like we used to, we used to walk the the shelves of like the classic section, of family video. And she'd be like, Oh, I've never seen child's play. And I'd be like, Oh, let's rent that. And then we'd literally mm-hmm. get back to my house and never watch the DVD. Cause I owned a Blu-ray of it. Oh, <laughs> we'd rent the DVD for a dollar and not even watch that thing. Cause wow. I already had a copy, but it was the mm-hmm. experience of like, we'd walk around and we'd get this and then we'd be like, Oh, let's go look at the candy aisle. And we'd pick mm-hmm. some candy or we'd get one of those popcorn things that, you know, you just microwave it and it has its own bowl. Mm-hmm. You know, we do that stuff. That's fun and everything. But at the end of the day, like what, you know, it's part of getting older. What we really want, at least for me, you know, what I really want is to that feeling of sitting on the floor with a pizza with my mom watching a movie and, and, and I'm not like, I'm going to get emotional. Sure. But like, 
those days are gone because they're they're not meant to last forever. They're not. We we you know we're not children anymore. Um, what? No, this is just really uh really sad and. I think it's beautiful though. Soul crushing. I think it's beautiful though. I mean, I can go to the movies with my mother and and feel the echoes of those memories. Mm-hmm. It's just, but I can't have exactly that ever again. You just can't because those yeah. moments are the reason those moments are so good is because they're not forever. You can't just bottle them and have them forever. Mm-hmm. It's because they go away. That's what makes them special. You know, that's why you get, you have to learn to appreciate them because it's like, you know, it isn't going to be that way. It's like, I, I'm, I'm, I know I'm like the most sentimental guy on the entire planet. Like the, a couple of weeks ago, I was hanging out with my dogs and we were all in the kitchen and they all were just really excited. They just went outside to pee and they'd come back in and they were all looking really stoked and I was giving them all treats. And I remember I gave them both treats and they were just chewing on their treats and I was looking at them and I was petting both their heads. And I just took a second and I was like, you know, it's never going to be this good. Like this is, this is as good as it gets. Like, you know, in, in the future, I will look back and be like, man, that was one of those good times. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So what, why? Oh, I- <laughs> no, 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 no. I no. I understand and appreciate your perspective. Well, tell me about your perspective. Explain oh. how I'm wrong. Oh no, you're not Go wrong. On. You're, you're, you're really wrong. No, you're, no, you're, you're not wrong. It's just that like, I, I am always afraid that things are ending. Oh, so yeah. I try not to like, uh, I try not to go like, wow, this is this is really important, and this is never going to happen again. Because I'm already thinking that all the time. Sure, sure. Well, because so, you're, like, you're right. I'm sorry. But you're yeah, right. but also in, <laughs> but also crazy. So, <laughs> so like, I don't think about that stuff. And you know, when people uh-huh. are like, oh, you know, we take our loved ones for granted and all this stuff. Like, I'm the person who's like, if I don't see this person today, will they be dead next time I try to see them? It's like. Every time. Uh-huh. So, so like, I'm just kind of, yeah. I constantly am, like, uh, telling people I love them because I'm like, who knows when the bus is going to hit one of us, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, it, it is what it is. I, I, no, I, I can understand that, too. I mean, some of it is is my anxiety. It's I'm just trying. I just try to because I know for a fact that nothing lasts forever. I just try to kind of take a deep breath and go, well, if that's just the way it is, then that is then I have to learn to be OK with it. In my own way. Okay. No, I mean... Yeah. Yeah, I totally understand. And I mean, and also with the the nostalgia thing, the thing for me is that, like, I, I mean, I, I think I had, like a, like, a pretty good childhood, but, like, you know, there were but, snippets in there that weren't good. Yeah. And maybe if I, like, remember, like, watching anime with my family, and I'm like, wow, I really wish I was you know, watch an anime with my family again <laughs> in Plainsboro. But like that was when I was in high school and I had a really rough high school and middle school experience. Only like, you. Just me. It was really <laughs> hard just for me. <laughs> so, so like I don't actually be want to be back in that. Mm-hmm. And I don't think about that when I think about the other stuff. Yeah. Like, so, you know, I mean, there's always good things. Oh yeah. That we're doing and, and, you know, and it's okay that they're not the same. Yeah. So. No, I agree. I just think sometimes we we get focused on the simple thing, on the simplicity of like, man, if we still had video stores, I'd still feel this way. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't feel like I I really am very caught in this in this nostalgia. nostalgia. Yeah. Yeah. I I've I've I try to treat nostalgia like I don't. I mean, I, it's a bad example because it's not like I drink, but I try to treat it treat it like booze or something. You know, like it's great in moderation. Uh, except I don't drink booze and I have no desire to even moderate it, but you know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. if it makes you feel good in moderation, it won't hurt you. Then what's the problem? So I'll let myself kind of bathe in a little nostalgia here and there, as long as I stay grounded Mm -hmm. in, in the fact that, you know, I'm not a Luddite. I like the future. Like I was actually thinking about that the other night. If you had told like, cause now I look back at like when I was like 12 years old and I couldn't find a movie for five years that I wanted to watch because you know, the world was smaller than the internet was barely what it is. Yeah. And you know, I look back at that and I look back at that kind of lovingly. I'm like, Oh man, but remember how it was like, so it was all in your imagination. Like you had for five years, that movie was a movie that it wasn't 
you know, it was only mm-hmm. a, that movie yeah. view. And I'm like, yeah. yeah. And then I'm like, but if you asked me then, hey, would you rather just have all these movies at your fingertips whenever you want? I would have been like, yeah. Like, yeah. of course yeah. I do. Because the fact is, as much as I love all of that nostalgia, it's better now mm-hmm. for the consumer. Like, for the for the experiencer. It's better mm-hmm. now. Um, but that doesn't mean, I mean, I'm the guy who, you know, uh, drove eight and a half hours to go to a drive-in movie theater that only shows 35 millimeter film because there's a joy to that too. And there's a joy to celebrating the way things were, you know, uh, cause I agree with you. <clears throat> I, there's a lot of not awesome parts of my childhood. I mean, even just, you know, not even as simple as like, oh yeah, but that was during high school and high school is bad. I mean, like. Remembering sitting on the floor with my mom eating pizza. I mean, we literally lived in a very rough part of town Mm -hmm. and we got our power shut off multiple times and stuff like those were not the best of times, Mm -hmm. but there were incredible moments. And those moments are what really matter because those are the moments that carry you through life. You know, those are that's those. That's the I mean, that's the reason like. (laughs) That's why, like, if I'm visiting you, I'll be like, let's get a pizza and watch anime or watch a movie or what. That's my what I learned of love, <laughs> you know? No, but really, like, mm-hmm. that's how I learned to love. Yeah. So it is to is to create those moments today. Yeah. I guess is my point. So yeah. <clears throat> I, I, I didn't mean to get sentimental, <clears throat> but I always do anyway. So you say something. I need to clear my throat. I don't, I don't know. You, you need to keep talking. I don't, I really don't know. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. Oh, it's fine. No, no but no, it's, yeah, I, I do love nostalgia, but there is a lot of problems with it sometimes. I, I just think that, that often people just oversimplify the fact that nostalgia comes from our, our, our fear of getting older and dying. So <laughs> what? then I guess I'm all messed up because <laughs> I'm afraid of getting older or, and, or dying potentially just dying. But yeah. like the, the thing is like, I mean, I am kind of getting into the age where like people aren't the people around me, like aren't listening to new music anymore. Oh, or I they hate aren't that. Listening, yeah. Aren't watching new anime anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm not saying I am like voraciously going out and finding things, but it feels I, like you are though. For the just for the record, with music, but <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I, I met with anime. Oh, I was yeah, like, no, I, am. Are, I like, found something so cool yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it's so it's so cool, but maybe it's not. I only watched two episodes. Um, but like, like the idea that like someone's like, oh, I'm just gonna listen to music from let's just say the 90s mm-hmm. forever, and I don't like the, I just like the stuff that I know. Um, it is really strange to me like i I mean for me like i mean if i like something and it's still and i still like it because i you know like i don't like things from the past that i liked because i liked them then Mm -hmm. they'd still have to be good Mm -hmm. like um like i really liked fushigi yugi when i was growing up i don't really like fushigi (laughs) yugi anymore (laughs) um and it doesn't really bring me nostalgia to watch it. It makes me go, hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I wish I knew better. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know what I was going to say. Oh, so like, I don't get somebody who would just be like, this is just what I listen to now. This is the space mm-hmm. that I was in when I was growing up, when when it was the most impactful time of my life. And I don't get new music or I don't get new anime yeah. um like because uh, because to me even the things that i that i love that are from the past that have special places in my heart or like i still think are like amazing like once i've seen them once or a couple of times they don't have the same especially music it can't hit me the same way as sure. it could when i didn't know what it was yeah and that's the best feeling and i don't want to not have that feeling anymore oh yeah so. No, I, I, I agree. I mean, I will not lie and say that, you know, the majority of the music in my music collection is older, um, <clears throat> but I've had a really eclectic t- sense of taste of music for a very long time. Mm-hmm. So like I've been listening to Oingo Boingo and Mojo Nixon and, and all that stuff for so long and Buckethead, although Buckethead's still putting out like so much new music. 
So I don't even know if I can count him as like, I'm not listening to anything new because mm-hmm. he's constantly putting out brand new music. Um, but, <laughs> but like one thing that I've noticed is like almost the reverse of nostalgia. Like I remember some songs being like total shit. And then I listen to them now and I'm like, actually this song kind of slaps. Like I actually like kind of love this. Like, you know what? The best example would be like Ace of Bass. I know that like a lot of people that like, you know, all that she wants is another baby. She's going to have a boy. All that she wants is another baby. Hey, you remember that song? I know you do. Mm-hmm. Or I saw the sign. Uh, yeah. open. Uh, I think those songs are actually pretty good. <laughs> But when I was a kid, I didn't love them that much. I was yeah. kind of like, eh. Of course, I was way into MC Hammer as a kid. Oh. You got to pray just to make it today. I said, no, pray. Pray. Yeah, you didn't listen to MC Hammer. It's clear. No, um, I actually didn't listen to MC Hammer. I have memories of uh, being so into my MC Hammer cassette tape that uh, I, I made mom plug up the uh, the stereo in the bathroom so that when I was taking a shower, I could listen to my MC Hammer tapes. I mean, so I must have been four or five, like, because so <laughs> I had to ask her to do it. I couldn't do it myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mom was like, okay. And I would like, I would just be going, can't touch this while I'm like taking a shower and it was <laughs> awesome. So, but, but uh, a lot of that stuff I don't listen to now, mm-hmm. you know, like MC Hammer or whatever. But every now and then I'm shocked though, that like something that was a hit when I was younger is actually pretty good. And some of it's kind of crappy. Yeah. Uh, it depends. But no, I agree. I, I definitely get bored with people who don't want to listen to new things. Well, and especially cause like I was actually kind of feeling guilty when you brought that up until I realized actually I've listened, like I'm currently listening regularly to like two or three bands, uh, that I'd never heard of until like five weeks ago because of YouTube. But it's like, it, d- there's a disconnect, I guess in my brain. Yeah. Yeah. So I do like, uh, some newer music. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, even if you didn't, that that's okay. You don't like the thing is like you don't have to like it. You could also like listen to it and be like, "Oh, that's all shit. I hate everything." Because <laughs> I do that a lot too. <laughs> I I just found two punk bands that I hate. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm glad that you uh that you could have an experience emotionally with them. They're so bad. <laughs> um, so you know, that's okay too. It's just. The, the the idea that you stop trying because mm-hmm. you you want to have your safe space, your safe nostalgia y kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It just is is not really something I I guess I understand. Sure. I uh every now and then I'll listen to something and realize I haven't listened to it since I was like twenty or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'll be like, wow. Yeah. And usually it's okay. I'm lucky though. I really I really liked cool, like really good bands when I was a kid. I'm just being honest. Like I j- well, because my household didn't have a lot of music, mm-hmm. so like pop music was barely a part of my life. So I didn't have a lot of like I like this because like my mom liked it or my dad liked it or whatever. I don't have a lot of that. So like I was listening to like Stuck Mojo and Ice T and and Oingo Boingo when I was like fourteen years old. So mm-hmm. I just had like a really odd you know taste in music. Yeah. Um, and everybody I introduced to those bands is like wow when I make them listen to them. So I'm like yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. But uh, well, my point is I just have better taste in music than basically everyone, I guess. Basically, my, my, yeah. That it doesn't I, age. I, no, no. And I basically like everything, too. That's the other thing. Like, <laughs> I'm not a difficult audience. I, I like most things I'm exposed to. Except uh, every now and then I'll see, like, a movie I don't like. And then I feel guilty. I feel like I let the movie down when I don't like it. Wow. I'm serious. It's, you didn't. I, I might I might have. I don't even want to talk about the movie I saw that I didn't like recently because I'll Aww. feel bad. I'll feel bad. Aww. So I know, I know. So but um so I have to mention this before we take off because we ended up talking about nostalgia, which is a good topic. Uh but you are about to get your um your licensing in New Jersey or what well, is this exactly? I I I because I have to admit. This is all so complicated to me. I have so much trouble keeping straight, like what you have and what you haven't done. So you got to bear with me. Uh What are you getting ready to do? I'm going to take the national home inspection exam (laughs) tomorrow. (laughs) Yes. So by the time people are listening to this, you will have already passed it. You will have already passed it. (laughs) No, I failed. And you will will have done such a good job. 
because we're all rooting you on. Of course, they're going to hear this after you've passed it already. So after I failed, they will have, they already. won't be able to hear. You know, we'll have they'll have to wait till in the following week to hear how well you when did. I yeah when I don't talk about it the following week because <laughs> I failed <laughs> like really really badly. Like <laughs> out of eight hundred, I got like a two hundred or a one hundred or something. And everybody like looks at me and laughs. <laughs> they all just turn their heads and point. Yeah. <laughs> just wherever you are. Yeah. So once that's done, what's left? Is um, there anything left? N- not really. Like I have to apply for New Jersey. That is, I have to apply for a license. Like I got it. Be like, here's I passed the test, and here's I passed these courses and stuff, and here's the field work I did, and then then. Hopefully they don't go. I don't really like her, and they just don't <laughs> give me. So you're, I mean, you're getting, you're on the cusp now of being yeah. like just a home inspector in Pennsylvania, New Jersey. Yeah, I mean, pretty much. Who knows about Pennsylvania? I don't know. Nobody knows. <laughs> um, Nobody can answer any of these questions. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, but in I today I inspected a two like a like a two unit building. There was like two apartments. A in duplex. It. Okay. If I'm you want to, so, if you want to okay. call it what it is, <laughs> fine. <laughs> um. But yeah, and it was it was like in New Jersey, but in Camden County, so it was really close. So I was like, yeah, I could, I could, I could inspect stuff in Camden County. That's not a big deal. Yeah, so, Camden's great. I always wanted to. Ins- I almost inspected a house in Camden, but I didn't get to so <laughs> i really wanted to oh god why do you want to hang out in camden because i bet those houses are in really bad shape <laughs> and i want to see them yeah i'm always having to text you like how did the inspection go and you're like the house was in great shape and i'm like i'm sorry because mm. you're like you're like come on disaster yeah i want to see I wanna, some bad shit i want to see things <laughs> you got to earn that money yeah <laughs> Well, I'm excited for you, Michelle. You're 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 almost there. You're almost I'm, home free on this journey to becoming a home inspector. I'm excited to fail <laughs> tomorrow. Well, because then once you're home inspector, you can like become a realtor or whatever, right? Is that that's yeah? Like, it's all the same like, thing. It's all the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> I I just get access to the MLS. They're like, here we go. Start showing houses. <laughs> So uh, when you uh, like go to your like mother's house or you you visit a place, are you already like inspecting it unintentionally? Like not, are you just kind of no, watching not the corners? Unintention- oh not unintentionally. no! You go in and you're like, I'm going to inspect this place. Mm-hmm, okay. <laughs> um, or or like you know quietly. Um, but yeah, no. Um, but then I stare at the wall, my my foundation wall outside, and go. Yeah, it's moving. It's not supposed to be moving. But we're not going to talk about that. Oh, okay. We won't we won't talk about that. Uh, but that sounds worrisome. It's okay. It's probably not moving. I did have a <laughs> I did have a structural engineer out here just a couple years ago I, tell me everything was fine. I remember you having so, to get a structural engineer. So I'm just going to patch up the concrete and then we'll see if it continues to move. And if it does, then I get to freak out. So Oh, well, as long as you have things to look forward to. Thanks for listening. You can email us at thisshowisawkward at gmail.com or go to awkwardshow.com or whatever. See you next time. <laughs>